Welcome to the Older Adult Community Transportation Request for Proposal Information Session. My name is Lori Bina and I am the Funding Process Coordinator. I am a Senior Planner and I work at Aging and Disability Services, a division of the Seattle Human Services Department. This recording of the information session will be posted on the HSD Funding Opportunity webpage. If you're attending the in-person session, please sign your name on the attendance sheet in the back of the room. If you're attending the virtual session, please type your name and agency in the chat for attendance purposes. The State of Washington's Public Records Act under Washington State Law states that all materials received or created by the City of Seattle are considered public records. These records include, but are not limited to, RFP, RFQ narrative responses, budget worksheets, board rosters, other RFP, RFQ materials, including written or electronic correspondence. In addition, HSD RFP and RFQ application materials are released to rating committee members and all rating committee members must sign and adhere to the confidentiality and conflict of interest statement. Personal identifiable information entered on these materials are subject to the Washington Public Records Act and may be subject to disclosure to a third party requester. During this information session, we will talk about the introduction. I'll go over the timeline. We'll talk about background and requirements, submission instructions, the review and rating process. I have some tips, the appeal process, and lastly, we'll have a section for question and answers. The older adult Community Transportation RFP is an open and competitive funding process. Approximately $600,000 is available through the Older Americans Act, Title 3B, and Washington State Senior Citizens Services Act. Seattle general funds may be allocated when the 2024 budgets are finalized. Funding awards will be made for the period of January 1, 2025, through December 31, 2025. Continued investment after the initial contract period will be contingent on successful performance and funding availability. Here's a timeline. This funding opportunity was announced on January 17, 2024, and there are two information sessions. The first one will be held in person on January 24, 2024 at 9.30 a.m. in Renton. The second session will be held remotely via Teams on January 25th, 2024 at 1.30. You may submit questions and the last day to do so is February 6, 2024. The most important date here on this timeline is the application deadline and that is Wednesday, March 6, 2024 at 12 noon. The review and rating process will occur between March 14 through April 3rd, 2024. We plan on announcing the awards on May 21st, 2024, and the contract will start January 1st, 2025. Here are the components that we are going to go over. The background, the service and program models, eligibility criteria, the populations, service components, performance measures, and the requirements for key staff. HSD invests in community transportation to improve the mobility of older adults in King County. As a result, Older adults who would otherwise be isolated and disconnected from critical activities and services 
continue living in the homes and communities of their choice as they age. Community transportation that is affordable, accessible, and easy to use plays a critical role in promoting health equity. Community transportation helps fill the gap left by public transit. And the goal is to provide service throughout King County in a coordinated manner that avoids duplication. The funding is available in two program areas, health services transportation and food access transportation. Applicants may propose one or more transportation programs or solutions under one or both of the program areas. Health services transportation allows people to access healthcare by providing trips to medical, dental, and other essential appointments. Health-related trips are also eligible. For example, trips to pick up prescriptions or medical supplies, or can be used to visit a relative who is in the hospital. Access to activities that promote social, emotional, and physical health are also permissible. For food access transportation services, these are the allowable services. It allows people to access healthy food, including culturally relevant options. It also supports the Human Services uh, Department funded congregate meal programs. It also includes trips to food banks, farmers markets, and grocery stores. These services are not allowed under the food access transportation. It will not include proposals to provide food delivery. And we will not allow proposals that serve a single program site, clients of a single program, or trips within a small geographic area, such as a single neighborhood. The services components can be found on page eight, and this is the list. Vehicle accessibility and maintenance, the minimum service standards for volunteer transportation, nutrition transportation services, and reservations or dispatching or call center operation, We'll talk about staff and driver training, service coordination, the service start date, service accessibility, client surveys, and the service cost. The client eligible population are clients who live in Seattle or King County and are 60 plus years age. King County clients may be transported across county lines to access to access health services and or food. Priority populations for community transportation are identified through the Older Americans Act. These are people residing in rural areas with limited transportation options, with greatest economic need, with particular attention to low income, black, indigenous people of color and those residing in rural areas and or with greatest social need paying particular attention again to low income black indigenous people of color and those residing in rural areas social need may be caused by non-economic factors which include older adults who have limited english proficiency are culturally, socially, or geographically isolated caused by racial, ethnic, and or sexual orientation status resulting in restricted access to services and living independently, have severe disabilities, have Alzheimer's disease and related disorders, and or are at risk of institutional placement. Focus populations are identified as specific racial or ethnic groups within the priority population. For this funding opportunity, the focus populations are 
older adults who do not speak English as their primary language and have a limited ability to read, speak, write, or understand English and are Black, African American, or Hispanic or Latino, or American Indian or Alaska Native. Performance measures are defined by three areas. Quantity, unduplicated number of clients 60 plus years of age served by race and or ethnicity, and also the number of one-way trips provided by the program. The quality, the percentage of clients satisfied with the service. And lastly, the impact measure, is the percentage of clients with improved access to health services and or healthy food as a result of the service as measured by the HSD survey. Here are the staffing requirements. Programs must be managed by an experienced individual actively involved in the daily operations. The program must have enough qualified staff and or volunteers to perform the service. They must have written job descriptions for key staff and volunteers. Staff dedicated to volunteer recruitment for services provided by volunteers. Staff and volunteers must have ongoing training. All drivers must clear a Washington Department of Licensing record check and agencies must have personnel policies, guidelines, and procedures that ensure the safe operation of vehicles. Next, we'll talk about the application. Applications are due on Wednesday, March 6, 2024, again at 12 noon. You may submit your application either two ways via online at this HTTP address here, or you may email it to hsd underscore RFP underscore RFQ underscore email underscore submissions at seattle.gov. No faxed, mailed, or in-person submissions are allowed. Applications must be complete and on time. The system is not an online application, so it will not allow you to save your documents. You may upload files up to a maximum of 30 MBs. Acceptable file types include PDF, a Word document, RTF, or Excel documents. There are required fields to be completed. Please ensure you allow sufficient time to complete the steps in order to submit your application by the deadline. The online submission will automatically send you a confirmation to all the email addresses you enter. Late applications will not be accepted and HSD is not responsible for ensuring that applications are received by the deadline. Completed applications must include the application cover sheet with a physical signature, a narrative response, there's a 10 page limit, the proposed program budget and proposed personnel detail budget forms, which are uh, needing to be submitted by Excel forms, and the summary of proposal deliverables Proof of status as an IRS nonprofit, legal entity incorporation, or tribe, and if applicable, a federally approved indirect rate. Final documents, excuse me, financial documents will be collected once applicants are notified of funding. Fiscal documents consist of a balance sheet, income statement statement of cash flows, a recent audit report, a form 990, and a certificate of commercial liability insurance. 
Agencies for which we have incomplete or no financial and or insurance documents will be notified by the coordinator and required to submit all requested documents within four business days from the date of the written request. If applicable, applicants must ensure their fiscal sponsor can meet all criteria as listed in the HSD Fiscal Sponsor Requirements Document. Fiscal sponsors are required to comply with, the all, with all HSD contracting requirements and the general terms and conditions agreement. Fiscal sponsors are required to submit financial documents to HSD as outlined in the application and or at the request of the RFP coordinator. The rating criteria. Applications will be rated based on five criteria. The program design is worth up to 35 points. The capacity and experience section is worth 25 points. The part partnerships and collaborations is worth 20 points. And the culturally responsive services is worth 20 points. The budget and leveraging response will be re reviewed, but not given a score. The maximum possible score is 100 points. Please answer each section using the rating criteria as a guide, as this is how the raters will score the applications. Once applications are submitted, the rating committee will review all applications. They will then make final recommendations to the Human Services Director. HSD will then make a public announcement and also the agency will receive the announcement. There will also be a fiscal review. Here is a list of tips. Please follow the required format defined in the guidelines. Be specific, detailed, and concise. Answer all questions and in the context of your proposed program or programs. Submit an accurate budget and please use the Excel templates and double check your numbers. Please check the website regularly as updates and changes could be made. Have someone else read your application before submitting and meet the 10 page limit. Use the application submission checklist and we recommend you start early and allow time for submission process and any possible technology glitches. Review the online RFP RFQ submissions assistance page for helpful information. And lastly, you can email your questions by the question and answer deadline, which is Wednesday, February 6th at 20, February 6, 2024 at noon to me, Lori Mina at seattle.gov. If you would like to appeal the decision, you may appeal based on only two criteria the violation of policies established in this funding, funding opportunity or violation of policies or failure to adhere to guidelines or published criteria and or procedures established in the funding opportunity. The appeal deadline must be um, emailed to the Seattle Human Services Department Director within four business days from the date of the written application status award or denial, denial letter. A written decisions will then be made within four business days by the Human Services Department Director. The HSD Director's decision is final. No contracts resulting from the solicitation will be executed until the appeal process has closed. An appeal may not prevent HSD from issuing an interim contract for services to meet important client needs. Questions. 
please email me, the RFP coordinator at lori.mina at seattle.gov. And all questions again are due prior to February 6, 2024 at 12 noon. We will then post the questions and answers on the HSD funding opportunity webpage. Only written answers are official. If you have any issues or questions about the online submission system, please contact Sola Plumacher at seattle.gov. Here's a snapshot of this older American, excuse me, older adult community transportation RFP on the HSD webpage. The right hand column is where you can find and download the docs I, re I referred to, including the Excel spreadsheets. Thank you and good luck. This concludes the information session on the older Adult Community Transportation RFP. Before we end, I'd like to tell you about an optional contracting opportunity. I support a program called Medicaid Alternative Care and tailored supports for older adults in my senior planning role at Aging and Disability Services. This program supports people who are 18 years of age and older who are caring for a loved one, as well as supports the person they're caring for. The state recently added transportation services to help combat social isolation and to provide access to community services and resources. My division, Aging and Disability Services, is accepting applications for transportation contracts. For more information, please email Adam Abahussein at seattle.gov.